Hey there, Matt Scratch here. So uh, we're actually just going to be leaving on a family trip tomorrow in this car. Well, we're also going to be picking up some uh, car parts for the 67 uh, Meteor project to actually. Make sure, i got to measure and make sure that this bumper and the front bumper off this car will fit into the neon. And if it won't, i got to build a rack on the roof to accommodate it because uh, this is what we're picking up, two of these bumpers and uh, a few other smaller items for this car. So I've already measured and I've got uh, 70 inches of room. So Oh shoot. 77, 76, 77. Unfortunately it doesn't look like it's going to fit in there. And uh, I can't have it going into the front seat area, not on the trip that long. Across town that might work. Looks like I'm building some roof racks today. Oh joy. Well okay, I got my great big grinder out here and I'm just going to trim up the pieces of uh, one inch box tubing I'm going to be using for the roof rack on the neon. That's uh, mostly what it will be and then I'll be using a little bit of uh, 16 gauge to attach it to the car so I'll show you that when I get there. And uh, excuse the mess, I got a bunch of flammable stuff behind me and whatnot. Uh, so you should clean up things like that but I'm going to leave it there just so you guys have an element of suspense. And uh, yeah, we shall continue here. There we have uh, our equal, their 8 inch upper pieces and then our two cross pieces. So we're well on our way to having a roof rack here. So I'm just using my converted uh, wood router here with a, uh, a prep disc on there, a cor coarse uh, prep disc and that's going to take all the rust, rust and uh, mill scale off of here. So that I can get some nice clean welds, plus I'm going to paint it when I'm done. Okay, so I'm going to be uh, just tacking this together quickly. And then I'm going to set it up on the car and just see uh, how it fits. And uh, I'm going to leave it just tacked loose enough on the side here that I can tweak it around quite a bit and uh, make it fit and then weld it up solid. So uh, that's what I'm doing. Just one good tack like that on each one. got a couple roof rails. Now I am going to have to put uppers on the ends as well. I'll probably uh, do that at the same time that I cap it. I'm thinking of just running some like quarter inch plate up for an inch and a half or something just so that there's something on the end to uh, hold whatever's on the rack on the rack. Getting up here and see I don't have much room to work in the bay here. This is kind of a rush job too. We're going to be running a uh, 16 gauge down into the door jam and then spot welding it to the edge of the door sill because that's a, a double or triple layer area of the roof there. It's a supporting structure so it should be safe. Plus we're going to be welding it to the roof skin here. This is just, uh, I'm cutting out the uh, end caps and they're going to stick up to, uh, to act as like an end plate to hold stuff on the bar. This is actually the uh, a piece of the tank that I built my, uh, sorry I have a dust mask on. This is a piece of the tank I built my uh, snow plow out of. 
And uh, I figured it would be nice to have that bit of a, a curve to the pieces. It will add a little strength to. And then this 16 gauge, or no, this is, uh, what's this, 12 gauge, I think. That's for the, the rear bar, and then I have some 16 gauge for the, uh, the front too. Because and There we go, there's our jigsaw puzzle. I didn't uh, video uh, cutting any of that out. I decided to use uh, bits of chain. I'm going to weld them on the bottoms of the rails for uh, tie-down points. And uh, these are the end pieces are going to fit on there like that. I tried to round all the corners and stuff. As I said, I'm in a major hurry, so this isn't going to be quite as uh, pretty as I would like, but it will get the job done. This is actually the uh, fun part of the job here, in my opinion. I enjoy welding, so... There we go. First one done. Okay. Check this out, guys. I'm making some progress. I've got the uh, the first two rails on there. Well, just on there with tape to uh, getting leveled out. I don't know, it does look awfully high. But uh, remember that the bumpers I'm putting on there, they have those big curvy ends that come down. And I don't want it to contact the roof or, or come down over the windshield. So I've been using this uh, paper tube to uh, level it off because it is straight and it's light. You can see that sits on there nice and level. And now I've got the tape marking where that's going to go. That's for the back bar. So I'm just going to measure that up and then cut the pieces to go down to uh, there. And then uh, once that's all leveled up on there, I'm going to start welding it to the car. Okay, well, we got to grind a little spot here for the... Uh, upper uh, support, brace, whatever you want to call it. As I said, we're going to weld a piece of plate onto the body there. So I'm just going to grind that down to bare metal. You should cover your glass when you're doing this. You're going to... That bondo was no surprise to me. I'm actually the one that painted this uh, quarter panel and I put that bondo there. So uh, there's actually a hail dent there or something. I'm going to go and do the exact same thing on the other side. Well, I've already got the uh, other side welded on. And uh, so I'm just going to do the same process on this side. I got my welder turned really hot. Still not the highest setting, but it's like the second highest. And uh, we're going to burn her on there. I got some uh, got an air gun here to keep her cool. I did cover up the window on my 240, by the way. Okay, so now we're going to uh, weld the uh, support bar on. Well, 
Well, I've got the uh, Aquan weld on there. You can probably see it's ridiculous. I made it way too wide, but I don't have time to change it. So we're going to run with it. We're just going to send it. Okay, so this is uh, plenty ugly, let me just say that, but uh, it's strong, very solid. Here's how I attached it, and I know that doesn't look pretty, but uh, it kept bubbling up because of the seam sealer. See that half of the weld's really nice, that half's rough, but I got it from the back side as well, and uh, I got it really good in there from the back side. I just went around quickly with a wire wheel on my drill and cleaned up some well. I mean, I realize these are really ugly, but this is a utility vehicle, I like to call it. So I'm just going to quickly move the, I'll move the sheets around as I go and just spray paint it on the car. I really want it to grind all these welds out nice and smooth and all that stuff, but uh, I do not have time to do that. So it's just going to get turned black and later on I'll, uh, I'll fix it up a little nicer, grind the welds and paint it nicer. That is if I leave it on the car, which I think I'm going to now. It's, uh, it's growing on me now that it's all on the car. I am slopping a little on the roof and the windows. The roof needs re repainting and the windows it's easy to get off with the razor blade if you didn't know. Well, I'm going to call that a win. So I'll give you one final look at it now that it's all painted. I This just looks crazy at the back. I kind of uh, wish I hadn't have made that back one so I wide. Just, uh, this is kind of funny. I didn't actually think about it when I was putting this last bar on, but it mattered where it was in relation to where the trunk lid opens. And as you can see, I nailed it. But I, I never uh, planned that, so that that's pretty lucky. Thanks for watching Matt's Garage. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more and have yourself a great day.